What's up guys, this is Coach Grant with First Down Training and today we're gonna to be breaking down how quarterbacks can throw a perfect spiral every time. Let's get started. But before we get into this video, fellas, if you're a quarterback and you would like to train with us this offseason, check out that very first link in the description below. We are going to be traveling out to nine more states across the U.S. for two day long QB and wide receiver camps. Next up on our camp tour, we are going to be coming out to St. Louis, Missouri. Then we'll be heading out to Honolulu, Hawaii, Boston, Massachusetts, Cleveland, Ohio, Austin, Texas, Seattle, Washington, Newark, New Jersey, Denver, Colorado, and Los Angeles, California. So if you guys are local to one of those cities and would like to train with myself and my staff of coaches for two whole days, check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to have you out there. Let's get back to this video. All right, guys, so when it comes to throwing a spiral, there is a lot more to it than just flicking your wrist. Yes, that term is important. Yes, you hear quarterback coaches all across the country overuse that term, but what does that exactly mean? And what are some other things that can tie into throwing a perfect spiral? So number one, we're gonna be talking about your grip. So your grip is one of those things where it's very, very based on like comfortability. Huh? I'm not gonna be one to mess with, you know, where your hands are on the thread, because I've seen a lot of guys have a lot of different interesting grips. Like some guys like to have their index finger almost by the top. That's okay if you got really big hands. I've seen some guys have their hands all the way over here. I've seen some guys have their hands less on the ball. That's totally fine. Whatever grip you have that feels most comfortable, but the one thing that remains consistent with every single grip is that you cannot have your palm on the ball. Okay, so you do not want to be the guy who's got his palm all over this ball. A lot of times guys who have smaller sized hands, maybe not the strongest grip, maybe you moved up in a ball size, they try to put their palm all over the ball. Now when you guys throw the ball, obviously we talked about that wrist flick. When you have your palm on the ball, you physically can't get that flick. It's almost like a push off of your palm. The finger that's the most important in terms of spinning the ball is your index finger. However, if you guys have your entire hand all over the ball, your index finger is not going to be the last thing to touch that ball. We want the ball to stay in the webbing of your hands. It doesn't need to be like fingertips because you're not going to have a grip on it, but in the webbing of your hands, have a slight gap of air between your palm and the ball so that last finger to roll off that ball can be the index finger, which will give you that better spin if you have the correct wrist flick and the other things that we're going to be discussing in this video. All right, guys, so one of the things that nobody talks about when it comes to throwing a spiral is having a disciplined front side and head on your throw. So every single quarterback, when they throw, their body is split into something or split down the middle by something called a midline, right? It's an imaginary line that goes down the middle of your body. But if your front side and your throwing motion is flawed, it prevents your arm from getting to something called extension. You pull your arm off of the midline, which will affect your spiral. How many of you guys, I'm sure a lot of you, like when you try to throw a deep spiral, the nose of the football doesn't turn over. It just kind of fades up. It turns sideways. That's usually because you are falling off the midline with your front side. And we're going to explain in this video some of the things that will cause that. So when you go to throw, like I said, it's all about being able to get to a point of extension. That's that wrist flick that everybody loves to talk about. Yes, you need a good grip. Yes, that index finger is important, but you need to be able to extend. And by extend, I mean literally extending where your release is maybe six inches in front of your front foot. So your front side has to be disciplined. What does discipline mean? It needs to be stable. Because a lot of quarterbacks, the old school method that people were taught was, and this is where the real high release point comes from, is you want to take this elbow and break some glass. You want to swing your elbow through as a source of power, but when you swing this elbow down to your hip, look what that does to my head, look what that does to my shoulders, and ultimately look what it does to my release. I'm coming down on the ball. So if you're throwing a deep ball, and let's say I'm here and I'm going back to throw and I bring this elbow down and I dip my head, this exits my frame and I can't get to extension. I'm essentially pushing the ball up in the air. So when you go to throw, you want to keep this front elbow disciplined, aka the front shoulder as well. You want to almost think of it, your front hand is eating a sandwich. If you keep that hand in front of your face like you're eating a sandwich and that elbow doesn't swing down, your release can stay in a disciplined spot. Now, this is where another reason guys fought, are flawed with their front side is they were taught the old school, you start with your left shoulder on the target and you want to finish with your right shoulder on the target. Now that is very bad because what guys will do is they'll go back into their motion and they'll take this front arm and pull open to get that rotation. But look what that does to my arm. It brings it off of that midline and that's why I come across and I can never get to extension. My arm physically can't extend and snap because it is outside of my frame. So what you want to think about doing is keeping your hand by your face, eating a sandwich so that elbow doesn't pull and you don't dip your head. 
Number two, I want to keep my shoulders and my hips on my release parallel to the target because that will keep my release inside my frame. That allows me to snap and extend. And again, a lot of guys have different arm slots. You see it all the time. You see all these quarterback coaches talk about arm slots changing up here. They do all these stupid drills where they're almost throwing underhand and they, everybody loves to talk about arm slots. However, if you can't get to extension, none of that crap matters. So you're, there are many different arm slots. You could have a high release when you're trying to throw over something, but if you stay stable, you're still gonna be able to spin it. You change up angles, you're throwing a deep ball, you stay stable with the front side, hand by the face, shoulders level, you'll still be able to spin it. However, even when you throw around somebody, but a lot of guys, they see that and they still have a flawed front side. So they'll be here and they'll be ripping open and thinking that, oh, I'm throwing like Patrick Mahomes or stupid quarterback coaches on social media out here, but you're not getting to extension and that's the problem. I got no problem with the arm slot. I got no problem with the low one or a high one. I need you to stay compact and that is what will help you spin the ball, but also help you be more consistent. So a good gauge when you let go of that ball is you wanna think hand eating a sandwich, shoulders and hips stay square so the release is inside the frame. Don't pull down and dip the head because it lengthens. Don't rip open because the arm widens and that will prevent that spiral. All right guys, so now I'm gonna give you a couple different drills that you can work on to improve that spiral and you could kind of work on that extension point and also that snap of the wrist and how that ball comes off your hand. So this first one is going to be for extension. So you need a towel, you need a football, I'll get to that in a second, but the reason why you hold a towel is because when you get to the correct extension point at your release, you're gonna hear a whip of the towel, like you're cracking somebody with a towel. You're going to hear it if you do it correctly and extend correctly. That's why you see so many quarterbacks work with the towel. A lot of people don't know why quarterbacks coaches work with the towel and a lot of quarterback coaches don't even know why they use the towel they're just having their guys throw with it because it looks cool and they can post it on social media fellas it's for extension which is going to directly translate to accuracy and your spin so a good thing to work on that front side stability because that's how I get to extension I, I don't have extension when my elbow drops I don't have extension when my shoulder swings I have extension when my release is inside my frame lower high arm slot hand by the face, shoulders and hips level. It doesn't need to be also like super uncomfortable by the face. You can just have it by the collarbone. I just need you to stay level. So a good thing to do, hold the football in your front hand because your football has some weight. You have this towel, put your middle finger over the top of the towel. And all you're gonna do is just throw in front of a mirror, but you're gonna keep this football by your face because that forces you to have to stay level. And now your arm isn't gonna be outside your frame. It's probably gonna feel a little awkward for you, those of you that have that problem. But you're going to be here, standing in front. All we are doing is just gonna step and throw normally, but we stay level. Now, if you pull open, you're gonna feel it because you're holding a football. If you drop your elbow, you're gonna feel it because you're holding a football. You have an object here. You could do this with a light dumbbell. You do this with like a heavier football if you want. It doesn't have to be just a regular size ball. So all you're doing, you wanna hear that snap of the towel and you want to extend and finish through. Come back, snap of the towel. Come back, snap of the towel to work on that extension point, which will help you get more spin on the ball, more consistency and more accuracy. All right guys, so now an easy drill that you could do in your backyard, in your front yard, wherever you have some space and you don't have a ceiling above your head is simply just playing catch to yourself to work on that nice spin. This is something that I used to do when I played, like, you know, I'd go out to the field, I'd have a workout, whatever it might be, and I felt like the ball wasn't spinning properly. I would literally go into my room and get 100 perfect spirals where I'm just throwing this ball straight up in the air or outside just to get myself back in the feel of that ball going off of that index finger. Now you might have to play around with it. You might feel like, okay, maybe if I adjust my grip here, this could be better but you need reps at it. Grip is one of those things that a lot of guys don't change because if you're trying to do a million different things with your grip, you're not thinking about your mechanics or other things like, like you know, reading a coverage or et cetera, whatever it might be, that can really mess with your game. So reps are important and this is an easy way to get it. The only thing I recommend is if you're gonna play catch with yourself throwing the ball up in the air, give yourself an arc of the shoulder. Don't be that guy that just throws like this because that can get you into a really bad habit of dipping the ball behind your head. Give me a slight arc of your shoulder and you're just simply gonna play catch to yourself and work on that extension point. You can work on staying disciplined with the front side. Just get you comfortable with that ball spinning off your hand. There's an easy, simple drill you can do. There's no magic formula to get a better spiral. Yes, you have to do the mechanical things that we talked about, but honestly, it's gonna take reps. Playing catch with your dad, your brother, your sister, whoever the hell wants to catch for you, or just throw into yourself. But you need reps with a specific grip and a specific technique if we want to master that art of the spiral. All right, guys, I really wanna thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. 
hope this video gave you some value and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. We always appreciate the feedback. And again, fellas, if you're a quarterback and you would like to train with us this off season, we're coming out to nine different states across the country for two day long QB and wide receiver camps. So check out that very first link in the description below if you want some more information on that. We'd love to have you out there, fellas. I'll see you guys next time.